Oh, another beautiful warm day today. It's supposed to be in the mid 70s. Yesterday it got about the mid 70s. It even got warmer in places. Ha, ah, tomorrow in the low 80s to high 70s. So our summer begins just a slight bit early, but who's counting when we have, well, anyway. So out to do a little hike. My knees have been absolute hell. I've had ice and ice and ice. This is the knees heal and the back goes out and then the knees and the, unbelievable. Do whatever you can do to take care of yourself. You do one thing wrong and you'll know it later on. <laughs> so let's go on with the hike. Okay, so a commenter left a comment on my last video. Um, here you go, here it is. And I wanted to uh, respond to that comment because he thought that war could solve problems. And so many leaders around the world and males do think that war is a problem solver. Similar to a fight, is a problem solver. Well, just the opposite is true. It's been rare when war actually solves a problem. So we spent billions of lives destroying a problem during World War I and II. It cost so much to the planet and to the amount of materials that we had, the steel, the aluminum, all that got used up in this war nonsense. So now we're on the back side of everything, running out of stuff because we went through two world wars, civil wars, wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. I'm talking about the US. But so I don't think war is an answer. For instance, Pakistan Prime Minister Irwin Kerwin confirmed the worst case scenario could have played out between the fight Pakistan and India. The reason it's so bad that these two are at war with each other, which is just absolutely crazy, two grown men at war with each other and are willing to nuke the other country because they got pissed off. Nothing really happened. A few things went off here and a big deal. You, you're going to nuke the entire planet because of a few uh, rockets and, and so anyway, um, the reason this is so, so bad is because people aren't educated about nuclear war anymore. There's more blurring of the lines between conventional and nuclear weapons. There are now nine countries that are nuclear armed. The big ones are the U.S. with 6,450 nuclear weapons that we know of, Russia, 6,850 nuclear weapons, Pakistan, 150 nuclear weapons, India, 140 nuclear weapons, the U.K., has 215, China has 280. War is outdated. That is one thing that humans have done right. They've made war obsolete. You can't win it. There's no reason to rely on it to, to solve your problem. And yet again, this is our fault for putting in bad leaders who don't look at the big picture and who, what their consequences are, such as the uh, one here in the US who also threatens nuclear war on North Korea. Both countries a nuclear cannot solve the problem. How many nuclear weapons would it take for today's arsenal to kill off the planet? Less than 10 going off all at once. Hello? Some say maybe many as 16 go off at once. You'd kill the planet. Unfortunately, in a nuclear war, there's no push a button, send one nuke out, and wait to see what happens. There's push all the buttons at once. Save a few for afterwards to make sure that you wipe out the other country before they lob their nukes back at you. You don't wait for a response. That's 150 nukes, minimal. People, do you get the, the picture? Nuclear war is obsolete. The leaders in all the countries around the world need to understand that. Do your homework. See what nuclear war would cause. See what just four nuclear bombs, Pakistan and India, would do to the rest of the world. Do your homework. It's sickening that these leaders don't do their homework. They're busy on the golf course.
So here in the U.S., the orange man says he will build up our nuclear arsenal since we've pulled out of all the nuclear treaties with Russia and other countries. It's build them as fast as you can, nuclear arms race. And that's what the orange man is promising. That's also what Russia is promising now. So we've got the most nuclear-powered countries building up their nuclear arsenal, and I don't understand why. How many times do they need to blow up the planet Earth? So I guess my whole response to his response, I think his name Blood, Blood, Bloods, I'm not sure, I don't remember your, your uh, handle, but anyway, I'll uh, look it up. I think it was Bloods, but it'll be on the... I think that war is not an answer for anything, really, except for the most dire situation, which we haven't faced since World War II. But yet, these leaders are just making up crap about stuff coming... You know, they are coming after us. There's always a somebody. And that way you keep the military-industrial complex purring forever. And they will purr and purr and purr until they get what they want. And that's more money and more money. Just like the orange man here in the U.S. has pledged far more money than the military asked for. So, of course, that way he can probably figure out a way to use that money to build his useless wall. When are we going to start the pendulum swinging the other way? Well, not until the people do. Back in the 1960s and early 70s, the pendulum was on the left side, just barely. And we got rid of war. We, we were downgrading war. We were going to have a peace dividend, remember? Back in during uh, when Clinton's first... Uh, term in office, he promised a peace dividend because there was so much peace going on. The military-industrial complex wasn't going to have that, and they've prevailed. More wars coming. Nukes? Boy, do they make plenty of money on those things. You know, I have to say that the planet came with some pretty dumb apes and we've seen so many different apes come and go different types of humans or people kind different uh, varieties and this variety seems like it destroyed that, all those previous varieties of humans now it's time for us to destroy ourselves if we don't make war obsolete forever obsolete never again obsolete